the under item 12, the third paragraph, where Mr. Delphi's quote questioned the bad section of the road on East River to south of where the county fixed the drain. I, I think you should add into that Church Road. That's at Church Road is what he was talking about, if, I, if I'm correct. That's right. And it doesn't mention that since there was some discussion about that later. I think it ought to say Church Road. So East River at Church Road. Sure. Uh, any other comments about the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes are approved. Uh, next item are the uh, vouchers, um, and that's pages 9 through 18. Does anybody have any comments on the vouchers? If not, can I have a motion to approve the vouchers? Second. Move and supported that the vouchers be approved for, um, uh, uh, that's vouchers number 13,043 to 13,048. Uh, and that's basically for January of um, 2012. All, all in favor and keep by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Voucher report is approved. Next, we have a review of statements and revenues for our expenses through January, pages 19, uh, 27. So this is really the 10th month of the fiscal year. Everybody's had a chance to look at those. We normally just ex receive them unless somebody has a specific question. Any questions by anybody? All right. We will then uh, receive the statements of revenue and expenses for Jan through January of the fiscal year uh, 2012. Actually, it's the 2011-12 fiscal year. We now have the Treasurer's Report through January, page 28 of our packet. And it shows we do have a Mr. Treasurer, a pretty good balance again, uh, $2 million, and that was down considerably. So, um, of course, we any comment on that, Ted, specifically? Or? Yeah, payback is wonderful. <laughs> and it indicates some tax collections, I suppose. Uh, on the back side of the report, it shows the balance of storm drain funds, back bike path and road improvement fund. I call your attention to that because um, I've, I learned uh, from Barry uh, Sedlak that the, if you recall, there was a project where some $900,000 was going to be used at the airport of our drain money, borrowed and then paid back. That project's never occurred. Is that correct? I, I believe it has not. It's not going to, it looks like, right? Um, I haven't heard the final outcome, but it, as of right now, I don't think it's going to happen. Okay. So the... Uh, cash in the bank for our storm drain front is $980,000. I call that to your attention. It's important as we look at drain projects later in the meeting under our capital plan. I have a question. And then I want you to note the road improvement fund at $258,000. That's what's currently on hand. And I, I believe that's po with posted expenditures to date. Ted, I have a question for you on the bike path monies. Sure. It sh still shows up in a report that we get. Uh, what's going to happen when the new commission on bike paths becomes a reality? Uh, I can't answer that because I don't know that it's going to. I don't know what step or what phase that's in yet. As it stands right now, everything is the way it was. Uh, I don't know that they've got the complement that they need for a bike path commission or committee or whatever they're going to call it. So as it stands right now, that commissioner committee hasn't been approved. Uh, after that, I would think that the maintenance fund would stay with the DPS and the construction fund would go, if there is any construction fund remaining, that looks like we're overspent on that construction fund if we go through with this project, uh, would go, go over to that new commission or whatever they call it. But... It's my interpretation that the maintenance of the bike path will remain with this body. Okay. And okay. also, just, just for your information, the tax distribution from the winter tax bills uh, for the road money we collected has not been distributed yet on this bill, so that's still right. to come. Right. Okay, so can we have a mo any questions on the, any other questions on the Treasurer's report? If there are none, um, entertain a motion to approve. 
Move and supported that the Treasury report through January of this year be approved as distributed. All, all in all yeas indicate by saying uh, all in favor indicate by saying yay. Yep. Opposed, same. Let's, let's try that again. All in favor indicate by saying yay. 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 <laughs> Opposed, same sign. Okay. Thank you. Well, we got through that part of the agenda. Um, <clears throat> I just want to, I see that we have a, a guest out here, and public comment isn't until way on into the agenda. Willie, it's your call. Do you want to speak now, or do you want to wait? I'll listen to more what you have to say. Okay, good. Just wanted to give you the opportunity. So. I want to let him know his tent's been removed. What did you say, Mr. Morrow? It's down. What? Your tent on the wire. It's finally down after a year and a half, isn't that nice? Yeah, he said he left that up there. He was coming right back to work on a wire, and he never got back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, under manager's reports, the first item listed is tires and electronics waste event, May 12th. Barry? Yes. Um, it's tires and electronics waste event. Right now we have one scheduled with the city of Trenton on May the 12th at the Kennedy Ice Rink in Trenton. Uh, we, Roseville has partnered with Trenton Gibraltar. Uh, Riverview in the past to put on one of these events. Um, our contribution is usually on that day I send one person from the department over to assist them with the program. Um, we, we have along those same lines we have been asked by uh, the township manager Mr. Reem and trustee Mr. Kantz uh, regarding hosting an electronics e-waste event here on Gozeal. Um, there was some interest shown, uh, I guess, from some of the residents, and it was conveyed to us that uh, there was enough interest out there that they warranted us looking into it, and Lorinda did. Uh, she checked, uh, first of all, with our vendor waste management to see what they do along these lines. They referred her to two or three other companies who put on these events. Um, and Lorinda spoke in particular with a company that's called 5R Processors Limited. Um, they will come over here and put an e-waste event on for us, uh, probably on a Saturday. Uh, they did say they were booked through April, um, but they would come over at no cost to us uh, and, and put this event on. But the only stipulation is, is we would have to open it up to off-island people also in order for them to get enough uh, participation to make it worth their while to come over here and set up operation. Uh, I also just wanted to let you know that throughout the course of the year, last year, and the year that we're in right now, uh, or 2011, there's been about a dozen of these events hosted in different places in the county. Some of them sponsored by Wayne County, some of them sponsored by cities and, and, and townships. So there are plenty of them out there if people want to take advantage of them. Um, but the information starts on page 30 in your packet, and it kind of gives you a rundown of what this company will do regarding that if we want to participate or we want to hire them to come in, not hire them, if we want them to come in and uh, put on an e-waste collection for us. So if, if anybody has any questions, we we have the info. Linda put all of this information together. Um, was on the telephone at quite length with the different vendors, getting information, uh, putting it together so we could present this to you tonight to see if you were interested in having something like that uh, here. Okay. Discussion on the other. Yes. Mr. Chair, uh, I have put on several of these events myself in the state. We have removed. Over 700,000 pounds of e-waste in the last two years. That include that would fill up 32 trailers, 53 foot long. The big problem that we face with an e-waste event is data integrity. People that bring their computers and their cell phones and things often leave the data in them. Uh, so the uh, the possibility of this material handling in, uh, and coming into the hands of someone. <clears throat> who may have a malicious intent is there. I'm not saying that any of these companies do, but it, it needs to be explored as to whether or not or how the data integrity is guaranteed. Uh, the 700,000 pounds I spoke of was all ground into one quarter inch 
pieces, every stitch of it, and it was sorted and recycled in the United States of America. So the, if, you, if you would like some insight, I think I can give you insight. Mm -hmm. And uh, my partner on this is a little known company called Apple. <clears throat> Other discussion? Well, I guess the question I have is, if, if, if May 12th, there's going to be an event in Trenton, and do, uh, if you said it, I missed it. Is it free to us? Yes. Mm -hmm. why, why, if we advertise it adequately, why would we have to have such an event of our own? I throw that out as, yeah, well, it's a good point. create some discussion. Very good point. You want to speak, uh, Woody? To the I just said, sometimes people don't read or look at the TV, so they don't, and then they always come a week later. Especially when, when we do the dump the junk days. How can we not do electronics? What can I do with TV? Maybe we do that a week before, maybe you could have a holding pattern on the DPS, and then. Well, even if we did it, even if we did it, even if we did it, we'd have to publicize it on the on the cable. Plus, we should probably put a notice in the newspaper. Um, and again, if people aren't going to read about the Trenton event. They're not going to read about ours either. So, holding it has its there problems. Anybody feels we should um, have our own. <coughs> holding it has its problems too, Mr. Chair. They are uh, well. Given that we're short staffed, I, I don't know. I feel like why have it if Trenton has it? I'd rather see us make an effort to advertise. Sure. I'd agree. Is that, is that, I agree. That, oh, sure. That that's the sense. general consensus? Certainly. Okay. Do, I don't think we need a motion on that. You got the no. consensus? That's, mm -hmm. Seems somewhat unanimous. If anybody disagrees, speak up. All right. So you have some direction on that. Sure. Okay. The second item in the manager's report is um, a request from a resident regarding uh, the purchase of rain barrels. Um, this lady, and you'll see it on page 31 in your packet, was an uh, email that was sent from a resident here on the island who previously uh, resided in Redford Township. And I guess uh, rain barrels were available there for purchase that they could store water in to water their plants and their gardens and stuff of that nature. And she was requesting that uh, that same uh, uh, offering should be taken care of here on the island. So I told her that I would bring it to the commission for input. Um, we've never done anything like this before. Other communities have. There again, Lorinda researched uh, some of the other communities. And you can see on the, the, the pages following her letter the information that Lorinda had gathered. They didn't get that? Okay. Well, these rain barrels, they can be purchased. Um, Lowe's has them. You can get them at Best Buy. Um, Sam's Harry, I just want to make sure I understand you. For rain barrels, you can buy them at Lowe's or you can buy them at Best Buy locally. Yes. I, I wasn't sure. I didn't quite hear. Yeah, according to the information we have here, you can purchase them at Best Buy. You can get them at uh, some Sears stores, Sam's Club, Meyer, um, and, and various other places locally where you can pick up these rain barrels for a price. And I think they, it looks like right here they average between uh, $50 and $70. And of course, I think the communities who did participate in this locally in their communities, there was a charge for them also. They weren't free. Um, and, I, and I think I, we were told that the average price was around $70 for these rain barrels. So the purpose of promoting this is to have people gather rainwater and use it on their gardening? I, I take I it, guess yes. I save water? Yes. Well, according to this letter, she said there's a spigot on the bottom, so they'd have to be mounted up high. I, you know, be honest with you, Gordon, I've never seen one, so I don't exactly know how it works, but you're right. I think there is a spigot on the bottom of it. They'd have to have something. That's for drainage. That's to drain them or to get it out. You know, you hook a whole side. They're, they're, they're advertised. How did you get the water out? 
the spigot. You put you attach. Oh, I thought spigot. you said for draining. No. Uh, uh, yeah, they're they're in. Uh, you see them in gardening magazines all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, not a new item. Mm -hmm. Any discussion, comments? How does uh, how the commission members feel? I th I think uh, since they're readily available, uh, uh, I don't I don't see why why we would want to go into the business of uh, providing them. Okay. Any other comments? Well, if they want one, they're perfectly capable of just going ahead and get one, right? Do they need a permit? Absolutely. I would think so. Um, any other comments from anybody? I agree with the sentiment of the rest of the people. Yeah. I agree with the sentiment, too. I mean, we, we have limited staff, and why should we start selling a product like that? We could promote it. Mm -hmm. If uh, maybe if there's some literature other townships have or communities that we could get a copy of and maybe produce our own, but uh, I don't want to I don't want to downplay the, the, the significance of the suggestion. But if, if they're readily available in stores, it would seem that people can go out. I mean, sure. We, uh, we we've downsized government. We should probably be downsizing government a little bit, not taking on new things. Is that the sentiment? Uh, yes, is that sufficient? Sure. Yeah. Anybody disagree with that? Sir, you walked in late. Are you here for this topic? Or? No, I'm just here to uh, witness the meeting. Okay, very good. Good. I'm That's just fine. That's just fine. We're glad to have you here. So uh, I guess we'll just ask Barry to respond to Kay Murphy and indicate that okay. the sentiment of the commission was that we don't want to get into uh, this uh, service, but we will help her or encourage people to use them if it's... Uh, and where they're obtainable. Good so the thing. Sure. Okay. sure. Okay, we can do that. <clears throat> Next item, item number three under manager reports the annual meeting, uh, March 26th. Yes, that, and that's just in your packet uh, as a reminder. It is Monday, March the 26th. The reception will be held at 5.45 p.m. Uh, in the first floor lobby of the Township Hall. Uh, the annual meeting will start at 6.30 p.m. And the regular business meeting of the township trustees will be at 7.30 p.m. Um, this is just a FYI for people if they're putting this information in their calendars. Well, at last night's meeting, um, it's one of the, maybe it was Mr. Loftus, but that, I'm going to address this to you. Encourage the members of commission, maybe it was Mrs. Frucci, encourage members of commissions to attend the annual meeting if you're available. Uh, and so um, I would encourage you to do that. I'm going to try to make it. Ted, do you? Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's tradition that uh, to recognize the volunteers that serve on all these commissions, and that's about the only time we get to do that. So, sure, we'd love to have as many of you that contend be there. Okay, thank you. Okay. Item number four. Uh, some time ago, we sent out a mailing to the residents in the community requesting some information from them. Uh, number one, to see if they'd be interested in receiving their water bill by email. And at the same time, we were polling uh, their, the, our customers to see if they would prefer a different billing cycle. And the reason we did this is we did have a number of people come in from time to time asking us if we could change our billing cycle to every month. Uh, we had a few of them that came in and said we'd like to have it every two months. So, and we had enough inquiries that we felt that, that, that we should go out there and, and check with their customers to see just exactly what they favored. Um, so we did send a, a letter out to every uh, customer that we have, somewhere in the neighborhood of 4,100. Um, we was, to date, we've received 436 back, about 10%. Um, I'm hoping tonight that if, if people out there listening to this right now, please give us your thoughts, fill it out, send it back into us. Uh, we'd like to collect the data. Um, so far, we have received 186 people that are interested in getting their water bill via email. And we do that now. These 186 people are now getting their bill by email. Um, the more people we can get interested in this, obviously, the more money we can save over time. Um, if we remain with 186 that we have right now, over the course of a year, we can save approximately $288. So as you can tell, if we can get 
more people interested in this, we can save additional money. So it's out there. If the people are interested in having it done, all they have to do is uh, fill out the necessary paperwork, send it back to the billing clerk, and she'll take care of it for them. So in reading the summary that you gave us, if you had 436 responses, yes, I would assume that more people indicated they didn't want to move to an email mailing for the <coughs> bills than did. That's correct. It's almost two to one right now that they'd rather see it every quarter. And the quarterly billing at this point, there's strong sentiment to stay with that. That's as correct. Opposed to changing. That's correct. Okay, so it's a good survey. Yes, I'm, I'm just hoping that if anyone's listening out there, please send them back. We, we, we'd like to collect the information and, and see how everybody feels in the community. And the reason we did mail them out is because we wanted to get to everyone. If we put it on the internet or we put it in the newspaper, not everyone is assured to get a copy. So we, we did mail yeah. them out. You know, one thing you might uh, consider is um, maybe doing the email request once a year. I think you put the letter in an envelope. Yes. You could put the water bill in an envelope, maybe. I don't know if it fit. I think it would fit, along with the letter, uh, once a year. Mm -hmm. I think as, as people get more accustomed to this, um, uh, we may find more and more people that want to go to it. Mm -hmm. And the reason we did this also is in the last few years, since we, and you recall when we changed out our water meters, we went through and changed every water meter in the community. We now read them, read the meter electronically. Uh, Ten years ago, we had to read them manually every month. We now have the capability through uh, the reading devices and the one that we just purchased here a few months ago, if you recall, that data collector. We can now read every water meter in the township in about two hours. So yeah, I remember when we bought the equipment. When it comes to collecting reads, almost instantaneous. We can drive down West River Road, East River Road, Meridian, and collect the whole island. So it's it's very good information, and it just serves us much better than it did previously. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if, if you're all done with uh, manager's reports at this point? Yes, I am. Um, the next item are discussion items, and we're really going to look at all the budgets, all the public service department budgets and then the capital improvement budgets, and then it's been requested that we take action on them to um, forward them to the um, township board. I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk us through. The budgets really begin on page 35 of our packet. I, I'm going to try to expedite this. I'm assuming if somebody has questions, they'll stop me. I'm going to make some comments as we go through the things that I picked out. And you'll notice, in addition to that, that when you sat down tonight, and I've misplaced them already, you had three pages, page 36, they were paper clipped together, 36, 38, and 50. And when we get to those pages, we'll insert, these are corrected um, pages. So on page 35, and, and I'm going to just start going and ask for your, any input if anybody has any questions. The thing I want to point out here is, this is a summary of all of our revenue for our, our water system, our sewer system, our refuse collection program, our, wa our expenses for water and sewer operations, our wastewater plant, and refuse. The uh, one thing that stands out to me is you'll notice uh, for water revenue, there is no retained earnings. There hasn't been any retained earnings in the water supply system. On the other hand, the sewer system, we have accumulated retained earnings or fund balance. And under refuse, we have um, uh, we have this past year we used two hundred thousand dollars of our fund balance that we've accumulated over the years to balance the budget. And when we get to the refuse budget, you're going to see where we've essentially depleted our fund balance. And so we're, we're going to look at a, an issue with regard to our revenue rates. So that's page thirty-five. Any questions? Page 36, you get a substitute page, and the reason the page has been changed, is you'll notice in the, in the very bottom of the page that you have in your packet, the first item reads that, the, um, that for the water revenue system, and including metered sales, the total revenue is $2,792. $2,792,000. The second column over, which reflects the current year's budget, should read 2666000 
and it does not. It's, so that was, um, they didn't pull one of the figures forward. So page 36 replaces 36 in your package. Everybody see that? You with me, Jim, on that? Yes. Okay. I, I had that written down myself. Okay. So that's our water revenue. Any questions on anything with water revenue? Okay, page 37 is um, sewer revenue. And I, I do want to comment, I'm, I'm sorry, I want to comment on page 36. The, to balance the budget, they're contemplating a 10% rate increase. And that's just built in for now. Nobody knows what Detroit's rate increase is going to be. We haven't seen it yet. So this is just anticipation of a Detroit rate increase. Um, if, if we have a 10% increase in the rate, it's really a 5% increase uh, that, that we would put forward because of uh, the way the rate is structured based on consumption versus um, minimum payments. So um, anyway, that's just a built-in figure for now, sort of a plug figure. Correct, Barry? Yes. Then on page 37, we have our sewer meter uh, revenues and metered sales. I don't really have any comment there except 10 percent is plugged in there, too, uh, as, a, as a potential rate increase for consideration as we go forward to balance the budget. Any comments? Under the refuse revenue, um, page 38 doesn't really explain everything, and I, I ask Ian. Darzniak, our finance director, if you could go to page 38 in the handout that you got tonight. And what, what she's added to that is how to show how we've depleted our fund balance. You can see back in 2008, the year ending 2008, we had a fund balance on the, on the uh, refuse side of $897,000. And then that declined in 2009 to 733, that to 535 in 2010, to 321,000 in 2011. And uh, in order to balance this year's budget with the rate increase, we would have a fund balance of 112,000. So what the commission did years ago, and most of you remember this, we said with the fund balance that we've accumulated or that was accumulated for refuse over the years, uh, we um, wanted to spend that and, and not raise rates. So we've expended that, and with the recommended budget that they've come forward with, we're looking at a fund balance of 112000 that would go forward. And uh, when we get to more detail on refuse in the refuse budget, there's an explanation of how the, uh, rate, uh, the refuse rate increase will affect people. That comes later. So we were on page 38, and I don't have any other comments on page 38. Comments? Okay. Uh, page 39 is the water operation uh, expenses, and if you look at that compared to the prior year, if you, in all these budgets, the, where the, the, the first column we look at, um, and in this case for water, the expenditures listed on this page were 479,000. That's on page 39, versus 450. You can see that the almost the whole increase has to do with health, health insurance for employees, and that rose uh, some $21,000. Other than that, there's literally no change in the that part of the operations of our water department. And on the next page, uh, the, the same holds true. Uh, water itself, anticipated from Detroit, is budgeted to go up seventy thousand dollars, from nine hundred thirty thousand to a million dollars. Uh, maintenance and repair is going up twenty-five thousand, and water main bonds. The bonds for water mains actually rose. 37,000 from um, 596,000 to 633,000. Those are the biggest increases in the water operations budget. And I'm going to keep going unless you stop. Me on page 41, <coughs> um, you'll, you'll see we have um, an equipment purchase uh, itemized. We have both capital outlay, repair and replacement, and equipment purchases for capital outlay, there's a water system reliability study that's to be completed. There's a water supply study, and that study I, I'm anticipating is to further look at our options regarding the long-term solutions for the water system. And as you know, last year, we, in addition to the study that we did with Trenton and Riverview, we all approached Wyandotte. 
and we've not pursued a study with Wyandotte yet. Um, and while we were once, um, this is just my conclusion, while we were once feeling under the gun to do something, uh, with all the changes that are going on in Detroit's water supply system, with their sales dropping drastically as they have, some 40 percent, and with the reforms that might happen there, uh, we time's on our side. That's sort of a conclusion. Ted, you might want to speak to that. But I assume that this 35000 is if we want to study why in that system, I don't have any idea what it would cost us. Maybe the entire study would be 30000 And if Trenton and Riverview went in with us, maybe our cost would only be ten. But there's a plug figure for doing continuation of water studies. And then there's a reserve item for capital improvements uh, of 118000 Equipment purchases include a security system, um, uh, for, for our water system of $10,000. And I suppose, Barry, I, you can answer where some of that would be. It would be uh, at the wastewater plant and yeah, in some the, of our pumps? The security, the, the, the one that's in this budget right here on the water operations would take place at the DPS garage building. DPS garage. Mm -hmm. Half of a dump truck, a five-yard dump, is what's proposed with a plow. Be, they, they need a dump truck for both the water department and the sewer department. So um, that's in the budget. Also requested is a, a service truck, uh, a step van, so they can carry parts, hydrants, sections of pipe, couplings, other uh, items in it. We don't have a step van, no. and we, we use pickup trucks. And, and most communities are operating their utility system with a step van, so there's a place for the people out in a water main break or in a plug sewer to have equipment inside. Uh, the van and uh, something I think uh, based on my experience is, is legitimate uh, portable lights uh, uh, $5,000 this would come in handy especially out on uh, water main brakes replace one of the um, vehicles that's used day to day to run all over the island the Explorer and then miscellaneous at $15,000 so uh, I want to open that up is there any questions on the capital program Huh? Okay, we'll keep moving. So what does that mean that you you need a step van instead of the uh, Explorer? No, no, they need a step van instead of uh, um, the pickup trucks. Oh, where everything's carried out in the open. Yeah. What we're using right now, we're we're using a Ford F one fifty half ton pickup, right. and it's a O three. And we've been putting a lot of money into it in the last couple of years, maintenance-wise. And what we had in mind is, is if we could retire this pickup truck, move up to a step van where we could use it. We pretty much use it for water main breaks where we could uh, store repair sleeves, uh, brass fittings, all of the every everything that we would need to repair water main breaks. So when we drove the vehicle out to the site, we wouldn't have to make two or three trips back to the garage to get what we need. Um, so that that's the purpose of the step van. And I did, and I'm going to follow up on it, is I, I, I put out the word to some of the DPS managers that I'm associated with through the consortium. I got a phone call the other day from uh, uh, the director in Van Buren Township. He indicated to me that they had a step van that was surplus to their needs. And if I wanted to come out and take a look at it, uh, he said it doesn't have any miles on it, 11,000 miles. He says it's been housed in the garage all the time. He said maybe we could work out something and we could purchase it from them. So it, next week sometime I plan on going out and taking a look at it and see what it looks like. So I'll keep you posted on that on Good how deal. it works. Okay, uh, Woody, uh, I don't know what our procedure is going to be here. I'll come up, come up to the podium and if you have a question, but I want to keep rolling here. Okay, no problem. Why do we need two trucks? You have one for the water department, one for the sewer department. They're the same plan. They're the same, same organization. No, it's one truck. One truck. One you truck. said one for each side. Well, what I'm, you're right. Okay. What I meant to say is All right. the budget split half in water, half in sewer to buy one to buy one five-yard dump. Sorry. Good, good question. Okay, page 42 is the sewer. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can yeah. I uh, uh, take you back to 43? 43? We haven't been there okay. yet. Okay. Um, I didn't get there yet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm well, 42, the only comment I have is that, again, health insurance went up uh, $10,000 in the sewer department. So, any other comments on that page? Who's the carrier for the health care insurance? 
I don't know. Uh, Who's the carrier? The actual insurance company? Yeah. Well, you have I, a Blue Cross card. What do you have if you go to the doctors or you go to the hospital? Blue yeah. Cross, Blue Shield. Blue Cross? Yes. And that's the answer. Okay. All right, page 43. Mr. Bundy, Jim. Uh, uh, I'm just in, in me, I'm trying to, you know, was trying to uh, look at the summary on page 35 and tie it back into these other schedules. And... Uh, on page 35, it shows for sewer operations a million two forty-seven, and uh, wastewater plant a million one forty-nine. But the, on page 43, it shows for the uh, wastewater uh, plant a million one thirty-nine. It's a ten thousand dollar difference. And uh, it would make uh, a million two forty seven actually a million two fifty seven. So I just uh, all right. Well, that's that's a good catch. Yeah. I, I assume that's a mathematical error. Uh, that's what uh, check with Ann on that. So would you, Linda? Did you pick that up? No, I didn't hear it. Please. Would you repeat okay. that, Jim? Sure. Uh, on page thirty five, your summary. You show sewer sewer operation expense is a million two forty seven. If you go over to page forty three and do the math, which is backing the uh, uh, treatment plant transfer out of the the total, it actually uh, is a million two fifty seven three oh one. And the transfer is uh, it shows as a million one thirty nine. On the summary, it shows as a million one forty nine. Okay, we'll check. So you added it up that figure again on page forty three is a million two fifty seven. Yes, if you back the the transfer out of the uh, the page total, mm -hmm. you come up with a million two fifty seven. Okay. Okay, you got that. So I know you'll discuss that with mm -hmm. the finance director. Mm -hmm. Okay, back, we're on page 43. Jim, do you have any other comments there? No. The um, one comment I had is um, uh, you can see that our bond payments for the sewer mains go is going up. And that, um, again, we're budgeting a half million dollars to uh, find leaks in our sanitary sewer system. And we're working on that now. Um, so that is uh, something that's going to be new to our budgeting in the future. Was last year the first time I think that we budgeted that amount? Yeah, <clears throat> just to make a couple of comments on that. Uh, this is a real moving target. Last year we budgeted the same thing, 500000 and ultimately found that we needed to take another approach, so I think we spent about 160, 65,000 of that. Well, the rest of it went back into the uh, the fund. This year, we're budgeting also 500,000. I don't anticipate we'll be spending that kind of money on this, simply because with our discussion with the DEQ. We've, re, we've ratcheted the schedule for our ACO to where we're going to do some studying, which would be far less than half a million dollars. We don't have the
sprockets have been running 24 7 since they were put in in 1988 and they're worn it's time did we replace some of those this year we replaced two of them with used units that we actually had they were split sprockets that we had on site okay um but those were actually used uh left over from the 1988 when we changed them all out the <coughs> manufacturers suggested that we keep them and we used those on the two front ones that carry the most load. the two that were most small we put them on those all right next item is the lime mixer gearbox Presser and agitate it with air to get it going. <clears throat> Any comments? The next is the plant channel. Next is line system controls upgrade. That's just a chemical feed. That's uh, well, it's for the line system. Um, you know, it's kind of a batch process. That is to replace the fuses that um, right now has fuses and not circuit breakers. And if you had the circuit protecting breakers in there, and this is coming from an electrician, he said. We're doing damage, and we've had to replace that pump. The line pumps about every, let me say, very about every three years. We first snow and go.
in this example, I'll have to go back. In fact, what I'd like to ask then is that if we take an action tonight on this, that she provide us with a sheet that we can email out to all the members tomorrow or within the next week. Will you do that, Miranda? So that this is corrected? Make sure it's a corrected copy or at least it's explained. Everybody understand what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. So I think she's just trying to show the monthly payout to waste management versus what we bill quarterly. I did a calculation on it and a year, our, our bill right now we've been paying $130 a year for all of it. Waste collection, trash collection, recycling, and yard waste. Uh, with these increases a year, the residents would pay $196. That's very competitive. Uh, we were paying $144 uh, 15, 20 years ago in some cases. I don't have a handle on what the payout is now, but that's a pretty competitive rate. It is. You see where I live in a rural area, and we have to get our own trash collection. We have to actually contact the company. It runs about $12 a month for just trash. Any questions on the refuse? We'll get that figured. Uh, are we gonna? Is there gonna be anything going out to the residents to uh, let them know? I mean, other than other than the bill? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Once the budget's approved, we will notify. And, and normally, with regard to water and sewer, Jim, we've always we've always dealt with that in July. I mean, we get the rate increase from Detroit, and then we'll deal with it in reality, what, what it's going to be. And in this case, um, I don't have a handle on when this takes effect, but it's the beginning of this fiscal year, April 1. Yeah. Well, that's why I'd like to correct the chief command. Okay? And you'll email that to everybody. We ought to be able to at least speak to it if we get questions on it then. <laughs> okay, moving along, page uh, 49. <clears throat> There's a better ex explanation on page 50, and you've got a new page 50. What I ask Ann to do is, I, because I question how did we, our road fund grow to 697000 you refer to the new page 50, you'll see that uh, anticipated this year is property tax collections based on the four tenths of a mill that was approved by the voters would generate $220,000. Ann's estimated the fund balance as of March 31st to be 328, and there's a tax collection that would occur again. Uh, you see the summer here in December. 2012 for the next fiscal year. So this fiscal year goes from April 1 to March 30th. And so we're going to have two tax collection periods because of the way this fell. Um, th th that's not the right way to say it. Well, have one tax collection period in the fiscal year, but we just collected that on that first levy of the four tenths of a mill. Now our road budget is for road repairs. The primary as, you, as we get to that, and that's on page um, 51. I'm sorry. We're on page we're on roads. Yeah, I'm coming to that to talk about expenditure. Our expenditure breakdown for our funds is rec recommended. Annually, we have a dust control program for our gravel roads of 65,000. We have snow plowing and winter maintenance of 40,000, and a minor fee of $4,000 for administrative expenses, and then a reserve for capital improvements for road maintenance. We're proposing to spend over a quarter, mil a quarter million dollars, and I'm going to suggest or more. Uh, and then our roadside mowing, 25,000. Now we haven't had that quarter million dollars in the past two years to spend. This is generated from the four tenths of a mill that was levied. And for that, we're going to probably do concrete joint slab replacement. Um, Where? At, I'll get to that. Uh, asphalt replacement, joint ceiling, crack repairs, and so forth. 
what we've been doing now, Woody, is every April, we take a, we ride, we, we meet at four in the afternoon, we spend a couple hours, Barry uh, uh, figures out where we're going to do road repairs, and then we go drive those areas. Last year we even had the county, Wayne County, with us, and uh, but we had no money to make repairs. So what we would do is do our ride in April, early April, uh, come up with a recommended list of repairs, which we don't have at this moment, taking the worst first, and they have to spend at least a quarter million dollars on repairs and, and see what the county will do for us as well. You're welcome to ask a question. You want to come to the mic? Short Road and East River. Yes, sir. Right there in the corner. Yep. That's a bunch of crap. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Wayne County came in and did a couple drains on each one on each side, but the road is terrible. I know it is. It, the intersection is very bad. You know, part of that problem is the parking area is lower than the road, so it does accumulate some water there. But it reverts back to the other side. It comes back to the where the church is, not to the where the road where the dark parking is. Isn't the parking area higher than the road? No. Yeah, it no. Is. Well, the, the water road goes the road that way, though. That's what I'm talking about. Across yeah. the road, the area where they worked on the culvert. Right. That's lower. Okay. Right. There's only room enough for half a dozen cars there. But the other side is higher. Now that might. I've never seen it go across the road. Maybe. Gordon, Gordon he's, he's talking about going up along the church. There's only room for five or six cars. Right. One side of the road uh, by the church. Yeah. Okay, I was talking about at East River Road, the water lays in there. The parking lot along the river uh -huh. is higher than the road. That's yeah. Correct. You've got a dam there. And, uh, in fact, but, last year when that house burned down on Church Road, Wayne County had to keep a plow there around the clock to get the slush and ice moved out of there so you could drive through that area. We got that problem going all the way along East River Road, probably yeah. a half a mile up the road, coming south. Up to Stout. Huh? Almost up to Stout. Yeah. Well, no, that way too, but the other way, going north too. There's a lot of driveways that come out, and the roads are all messed up all along in there. And you're saying yes. Wayne County went in there and fixed some of that a couple of years ago, but now it's getting rough again. Is it Stout at East River that's bad? Stout no, Stout. Church. Right. I was talking about church. church I know. When you get down, it's almost a stout, and they cut and repaved right. small sections of it south of church. And then Woody's talking, he said south first, and he's talking north, north also. also. But, but uh, oh, you got six houses north. Yeah, put your right wheel in there. Hey, Sally, southbound on East River Road from Horse Mill to Ferry is an abominable shape. It's a mess. No, it's pretty no, bad. No. no. Well, it's bad at, is it Stouter Island that's real bad, too? One of those. Well, well, Stouter Island. Church is bad. Island. Yeah. Island. Island? Island. Well, anyway, we're going to look at all those, and we're going to see what we can leverage from the county. Well, maybe you could, somebody suggested maybe we could supply the uh, coal patch or the asphalt or Vitusium, whatever you want to call it, and point to how you do its job. <laughs> well, that's a good suggestion. Some of the work they've done is, I don't want to criticize them, but. I don't know that, but why should we pay for it all? No, I, no that's not what I'm saying. If, uh, you're right, they won't pay for it unless they do it themselves. But. I mean, if we give them that, if they're. Yeah, I agree. We should try to get what we can out of them. Right. If they can do the work, they got the machine. Yeah, they won't give us the money to hire a contractor. I know that. Well, I know that. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. on the on the church in East River, uh, another problem was the uh, uh, the church itself, the little chapel there. There was a, a drain that was uh, that's pumping out water, uh, which runs down and and uh, uh, settles there. Uh, I thought at one meeting we said that was going to be taken care of. Uh, we have met out there with Wayne County and, and members of the church, and uh, we, we kind of fixed it temporarily. We cut some sod out so it would rain a little better than it did before. But I believe the meeting that we had out there, the county kind of indicated to the church that they're going to have to modify, they have to change the direction of those drains. There actually is three of them that drain 
forward and okay. then hill. Okay. Yeah, because so on a cold day you can see where it's running down and it's freezing, yeah. so it's still and it's heading right to East River where it collects. Right. Two of those drains were added within the last year. In fact, we were <coughs> Okay, so that's where our road budget is. Uh, any questions? Any further questions on the road budget? And we're going to get into the detail of the road budget when we meet. And just to, I just want to take this opportunity to say our, our April meeting is um, April 10th. April 10th. What I'm hoping to do is uh, we do the drive tour through that afternoon. Before this meeting, we, we spend a couple hours deliberating over our pr prioritizing improvements. Hopefully the county will be with us. At least that's, that's a gentleman named Lonnie from the um, uh, field office and see what, what we can do in regard to getting county cooperation. That, and then by, and we discuss preparing an agenda so that by mid-May sometime, we invite the county elected officials and upper echelon department heads dealing with roads to come in and have a discussion with us about where we're going with our road program. Is that open to everybody? Sure, as it always has been. And um, we'll let you know when that is. Okay, so that's that's kind of the plan that I had in my hand. So we're, we're, we're done with, we're on to page 52, which is storm drain money. And uh, from the treasurer's report of cash on hand, she had uh, uh, Nine hundred thousand dollars, as you can see, with with uh, property tax collections this year, uh, she's showing a, a million three as potential revenue. And um, when we go do our road tour, we're going to look at drains as well. Um, Barry has listed a number of drain maintenance projects on fifty-two, um, and I don't know how much time you want to spend on those. We're going to have a chance to look at them again. But go ahead, Barry. I'll just go through these briefly. Most of these out here are just carryovers from last year. We plug these numbers in in case we knew, need to do some work in these particular areas, like the, the airport oil separator. Um, we, we don't know what summer and spring is going to be. If work needed to be done on those, we plug a number in in case it happens. The Grosville drain, we always put some money in there for that. Um, we haven't used a lot of it in the past, but. The Grosio drain is from time to time needs some cleanup work done out of the piece of water flowing properly. The road ditch and closures, we plug that in is just in case we do um, some road improvements, if there's drainage involved in that road improvement, there's fifty thousand dollars there to cover that. Um, the bike path drainage, there again, the plug number. Uh, some area of the bike path becomes uh, a problem as far as drainage. Uh, we go in and repair it and it comes from there and we have done that in the past if you recall. The only one that's different this year is the South Point Wilbur drainage problem. We have a problem over there in that area that's been ongoing for years. And if you'll recall back to last year, the Brook Circle drainage problem that we had that we took care of last year. Mm -hmm. This one is probably very similar to that. In, in the backyard in that area there's probably eight or ten houses and in the backyard the water probably gets two to three feet deep in a heavy rain and it has nowhere to go. And right now what we're doing with when this happens is we're going over there and I'm sending a couple guys over there with a pump and we're pumping it out of that area into the road ditch and it makes its way to the Frenchman's cut. Um, so this is an option. Uh, it's something that the commission may want to discuss. I put it on there if, if, if it's, it's your decision on whether we want to move forward with a project like this or we don't. When we do our tour, we'll look at it. Pardon me? When we do our tour, our road tour, we'll look at it, along with other ideas. Okay? Mm -hmm. Any questions on storm drain? Uh, just a quick question. Uh, uh, what is the drain and drainage grant program, the expenditure of 100000 What is that? Yeah. Um, that's a, that has been put in every year for residents. In fact, we're going to oversee the drainage grant program. Uh, 
residents can come to the township with drainage issues that they want to address themselves, and the township basically will match up to $5,000 through this program for people to take care of their drainage issues. Uh, it's a $10,000 project, we pay five, they pay five. It's a $15,000 project, we pay five, they pay 10. So, and it's working out very well. How many would you say we have? About 35 so far. About 35 so far, and it's been, been working out very well. Thanks. Any other questions on page 52? Uh, page 53 uh, begins our bike path. It shows the statement of uh, funds on hand. Page 54, um, same thing. Page 55 is a, is a, why don't I just finish this and I'll, I'll go. Page 55 is our maintenance budget. And, and they're, all this staff did is, I guess, plug numbers in for various things on the bike pass, uh, dollar amounts for seal coating. Uh, these are these are potential budgetary figures for seal coating, path perimeter, debrushing, that means roads along the edge of the path, cutting brush, uh, regular mowing, blacktop replacement, sign replacement, and, which we've talked about, and, and path markings, which we've talked about, uh, cleaning, sweeping, um, there's 10,000 budgeted for winter maintenance, and I guess we have in the past done some plowing on them. Yeah. Uh, I don't, certainly not this year. And uh, we did do some this year? Yeah, we no. did twice. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't see it. But. And then reserve for future maintenance. So go ahead. Do you have a question? I, I, let me just make one comment on the bike maintenance. If you recall last fall, again, we, we did some bike maintenance around 25000 that also is going to be carried over to spring because we got late in the season and we didn't get the seal coated down and we didn't get the okay. season. So and I think it's about $25,000 is going to come from these areas here for a contract that we did in the fall. Where are we at? Where are we on the bike path? Even though we got a new committee, it's supposed to be the bike path people. Where on the horse mail bike path? Yeah. I guess Barry, I have to give us a report because that's something that's been taken from our purview. No, um, right now, where it stands is we, we took bids here a few months ago. Okay. The bids came in uh, over budget. Okay. Than we actually have. It's in the process right now. We're having it reviewed again by Wayne County to see if we can get <coughs> cost out of it to reduce the cost so we can get it down to somewhere. Are there ones to jack it around? Well, th there's some costs in there. There's some pretty heavy costs in there around Park Lane and Horse Mill intersection. And, and, there, and we know there's a drainage issue there. It's been right, forever. Right. Well, in the process of correcting that drainage issue while we put the bike back in, it turned out to be rather an expensive item. In fact, it was that that drainage issue in that intersection was for the $240,000, $45,000. Oh and we're trying to get the county to work with that to reduce what needs to be done there. If we can do that, um, we can get that number down to or possibly we can afford it. Right now, I think there's $319,000 in the bike cap fund. The bids came in at three seventy seven. So you can't drain it all the way to Horse Mill? No. Well, the, the, the drainage that we propose there with the bike path will actually uh, work its way north on Park Lane, away from the horse mill, and go in that direction. Well, the main can't go south, the main can't go west? No, it isn't proposed that way. That was looked at many, many years ago, uh, and the going west to the canal would require a real deep cut in the ditch in certain areas along the horse mill, and they'd have to be enclosed with pipe. And at that particular time, the county did not want to do that. So the, the, the best way to do it right now is to drain it down by going going north. So you're going to redig or redo or re blow it through? Or there are going to be some new piping and everything done on that intersection to alleviate that, that water problem. Mm -hmm. Because when I did that a long time ago, they found that the water went to a box and then came out of the box and went down the drain. It, that intersection is there, since I can remember, has been a drainage problem. The oh, water, yeah, right. Water right, right, right there and there's no place for it to go. Uh, right. In, in this Invite that installation will correct that. Right. That's the tune of about forty five thousand dollars. Well, we'll get it done though. Okay. Uh, the last page of our operating budget is page fifty six and it's a reserve for construction of 
for a bike path, and, and, and the finance director has just put together an airport recreation area bike path at 74,000, the Horse Mill Meridian to Park Lane bike path at 265. So the question that you were just talking about is, where did this airport recreation area bike path come in? That's up at the end of Grow and East River? Uh, that was part of the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was part of the Safe Route to School project. Uh, it was one of the add ons. And to this point, we haven't been billed, but we've been informed that we're going to be billed for it. So that path is already here, and that's the one that runs along the the middle school there to the soccer oh, field. Okay. That's you already mean the elementary school? Yes. That's already there. So is that gonna deplete the availability of fund the three hundred thousand dollars available for a horse mill? Uh once we get billed for it it'll deplete it by something. Yeah. It's gonna reduce it. I, and I think that the end number after that was taken away was three ninety. I don't know what this well, all I would do is suggest that we, we don't have those figures, but if these figures are accurate, it would seem like for the horse mill meridian, all that's left is 265. 295, I think, isn't it? 265. If, if these numbers are right... 266. And, and we can only operate off these numbers. These, these are figures that the finance director has given... Right. Assuming that that airport recreation bike path, which is on the south side of uh, Meridian that School, was a grant for that. pardon? That was a grant for that. It was part of it. What part wasn't there? Mm -hmm. What part wasn't there? Well, this was an add-on. This particular phase was an add-on to the original. The original Safe Route to School program was sidewalks and that's where the grant came in the four hundred thousand this was an addition to that mm -hmm. soccer fields yeah you know, that's a good so uh, I don't I don't know that we can approve this this budget for what reason I don't know that we can approve the budget for this this for what? path construction since we don't know for what reason? I mean, you're, you're, you're just approving... The figures we're given? The figures you're given. I, I don't see a problem with that. All right. Okay, so that's our the operating budget. And the capital budget shouldn't take as long. If you look at the... For water and sewer capital improvements, page 58, there's two water main projects proposed for the year. Uh, one is uh, East River from Horse Mill to Ferry to replace the, the old, uh, is it a six inch line that's there? Uh, yes. It's about 60 years old with a 12 inch. And then um, on Byromar <coughs> between West River and Thoroughfare uh, to install a new eight inch line to replace, um, who knows what, smaller than, could even be smaller than a six inch. Okay, but it's in very bad condition, and uh, so there's three million dollars budget for those two big capital projects. Those are things we've talked about over the last year and never got to be able to do them. And one of, one of the concerns was East River Road. Uh, the hope was is we'd be able to get some county money to do some road surfacing. Uh, but uh, that's not going to happen either. So. Well, there's some bonding issues too. That, that those are over now. So right. One, if you recall, that East River Road uh, ferry to Horseman Water Main was there, and we have not received bids on that. Yep. Uh, whether it have to be rebid again, we decided to move forward, and not that would be a decision that we made on one. But we did bid, and it's one and a half million that we will cover. That was me. That was bid. Prior to the pre going on, we well, no, we, I think we did that, and we postponed it because we didn't want to pay the equipment to come across the coast. Uh, I, I don't recall it being bid other than just the time we did it within the last seven or eight months. No, I don't think it was bid. I think but, we programmed it, and then we had to pay. Yeah, it, it's been on our schedule for a long time. All right, so... Um, One other question. Sorry. 
when are we uh, when are we thinking about replacing the main on uh, Meridian? The um, the transmission main or the correct? The one that keeps breaking. <laughs> well, the transmission main does. If there's another one that parallels the transmission main on Meridian that we have a lot of problems with because it's old, that one probably could be put on the list to be done. We we do have a lot of main breaks on Meridian from all the way from you might say Bridge Road to Grove. There's another there's a main that parallels the, the 16 that down there. The 16 knock on wood doesn't give us a lot of problems even though it's old. Um, okay. Is that you answer your question? Did the answer your question, Frank? No. It, it, <laughs> it's something that we need to look at. We have, um, there are so many, it's hard to determine where to start. Okay. So the question is, when is the Meridian main going to be repaired? It's not in the bond proceeds at this moment, Frank. No. And it's not, it, it, I don't know. I don't recall whether it was in the five-year program or the five-year uh, outreach or not, but but we have quite a few. We have Meridian, we have Church from Western Road to East River. It's bad. Um, I mean, there's, I could go on and on, but you're right, uh, Frank. Meridian Road, we had three water main breaks on Meridian Road in the last week. So it's, it's an old um, eight-inch lead joint line and what we're finding especially here at the south end is when we have a break in that system the hubs are split all right well why don't we when we have our april meeting pull up the, all the information on the capital improvement program schedules and the bond schedules for the water main improvements we can discuss those at that time too when we have our study set okay all of the other um the next items so we've looked at all the capital budgets now so um I'd like to go to item number 11, action items, and we we can take these individually. We've we've already approved the one adjustment in the wastewater treatment plant budget, and everything else has been the same, I guess. Uh, with that, we can take one motion to approve all these budgets, or individually. So, what's the pleasure? I, I would entertain one motion to approve. The DPS budget, operating budgets, water sewer capital improvement program, wastewater capital improvement program, roads capital improvement program, drainage capital improvement program. So moved. So moved. Second. So it's moved supported that all those budgets, as discussed with the one amendment, be approved as reviewed this evening. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So we're recommending all these budgets go forward to the township board. Thank you for your patience on that. Now we're to public comments. Woody? I've talked to uh, Barry about one of these. Uh, the uh, West River Road from Lowell Circle South. You have about four or five speed bumps in there. And he said to wait till the summer to see if they're still up. They'll be there. Supposedly, when they made a deal with the Wayne County, supposedly some people put some drains under tubes. And they're saying they might be them. Also, there's two over on East River. Uh, go ahead. you got to explain that to me again. On West River Road. West River Road from one more circle south to the corner to, there's to the, uh, Roto. There's, there's, there's sections of pavement heaving? Yeah. yeah. At least five. Yeah. Five to seven. Okay. Okay. And uh, somebody said that there might be some tubes under it. When they made the deal to repave it, to have the people who are on the, on the water want to have their electricity over on the other side. So they might have put them in the tubes so they don't crack. But they didn't dig it, dig it deep, deep enough, I don't think. Yeah. Right, so it heat. It's been heat. You go over there now, you'll know they're there. When you take your ride, maybe you can do it at 35, we'll see if we like it or not. It's only 30. They're pretty smooth. Well, they do yeah, it at 35. Good they they aren't good ones. <laughs> also, we have two on Meridian. I'll say around Aggie Nash's house. Uh, just right down here. He moved. Huh? He, he moved. 
Okay, well, they don't. But the, 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 the monks are still there. They've been there for years. Well, I don't know where you, Augie, I don't know Augie Nash. Okay, well. <laughs> About five miles. Manchester. Away. Manchester, north of Manchester. You're going to you're gonna find one south of Manchester and one and one north of Manchester. And, these, and you can go, the, the word is scar fire, I guess. Isn't? You can scar fire it up? No, they... They can remove them. Um, but you talk about the bumps that need to be removed. Right. Yeah, they can do that. They don't need a scar fire on those. Generally, the scar fire needs on brass But what do they do on the... What do they, oh, they grind them down. They'll, they'll grind them down. Okay. Down like on uh, Fort Street. Is that they grind them? They, grow, they grind the nose down? I'm not talking about Harvard now. I'm talking about over at Fort Street where they, they level the bumps off. Yeah, yeah they grind it. They grind They grind it down. Okay. Grind. Well, they can grind those down now where Meridian. And you might be able to grind every one of them over there. But you said you wanted to wait for the summer to see if they're sitting there. Well, they're, they're going to be there. There's no doubt. Right. This summer, they've been there for a while. Maybe I can get to the county to do with them. Yeah, well, the county doesn't do it. And, uh, we do something. So we, the people that have problems with hearts that might not. They're not that bad. Oh, yes, they are. No, they're not. Yes, they are. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the... Okay, well, anyway. All right, those are, those, that's it. Thank you, sir. You've been at our meeting, sir. Any comment? No, I just came to uh, the CSU meeting. See what, see what it is that you do. Thank you for joining us. Joe, anything? So, the, um, you don't have anything, Joe, so... Uh, the only report I had I already gave was for April 10th meeting. So we'll go on, Jim. Do you have anything to report on? Nothing to report on, sir. Uh, Gordy? No. John? I thought of two things. One, Gary Jones, a very valued employee in the township, suffered the loss of his father last week, and I think condolences should go out to him and his family, of course. And then on the lighter note, last weekend, as it snowed, the bike path was plowed. So that was, I guess, the 11th of February. The bike path was plowed by about... Oh, one or two o'clock in the afternoon, the machinery was working out there, and I actually saw a bicyclist this weekend after the plowing using a bike path as well as walkers. So I think that's terrific. John was. John was. So, and that would conclude my comments this evening. Very good. Frank? Nothing. Well, nothing. Ted? Uh, I just want to thank the commission and the commissioners for. Uh, their due diligence on this budget. I know it's kind of time consuming and kind of a pain, but it's very important that we send it forth a unified body to the township board because we'll have a little time to review it, but we'll rely very heavily on this endorsement from the commission. Okay, Ted, thank you very much. Before we adjourn, the next meeting is scheduled for March 13th, and I know at least uh, two of us are not going to be in town. I will not be, and Frank, you will not be. And Ted, you will not be? I will not be. Uh, who, who will be here? Um, I believe I am. March 13th? I'll be here. So there, there will be a quorum. Uh, Gordy, you'll be here yeah. if you need a meeting. Yeah. So um, just call that to your attention. And if I, uh, so I, I also want to comment that if um, we don't have a meeting March 13th, uh, several of our terms are expiring. My term, Frank Kent's term, John Riley's term, and Gordon Miles' term. I think that uh, as far as Frank and I and John, we've all indicated we will consider reappointment. But Gordy, you uh, you are also on the fire commission, and you decided that enough's enough. Yes. Well, I, I, I per so I won't. I'll be out of town at our next meeting, and I won't be back till after April. So I. Um, I want to thank you for your service. You've been a great person to work with. I, I know you work awfully hard and take this serious. You've had a lot of great input, and you're just a fine fellow and a fine addition. So I appreciate all you've done for us over the last several years. Maybe I should stay. Maybe I should. Any other comments uh, about Gordy? No. Not here. I like his red sweater. Yeah. Ted, you want to sing? No. Uh, the only thing I said to Gordy before the meeting is I started on this commission back in the early 90s, and he was the last senior member, so that 
unfortunately, makes me a senior member. I'm not so sure I want that acknowledgement. <laughs> it's been a long term, Gordy. I really appreciate all of your assistance, your wisdom, and your knowledge. <clears throat> and I'm sure we'll be working together in some form or fashion from here on, too. Thank you. You can be like Jack Duffy. Just come give us hell one. Yeah. <laughs> he does a good job. <laughs> All right. Well, well thank you, Gordy. And okay. with, with that, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Move to support. We adjourn. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank you all.